How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker here and I'm out at the park. It's a little sunny, a little breezy. We got dogs barking over here, but we're gonna make this video work. This is the DJI Fly app we're talking about. And we're gonna talk about the GPS and the compass functionality within the DJI Fly app. So right now I have the DJI Mini 2. This is also gonna work with the Mavic Mini as well as the Mavic Air 2, the three DJI drones that work with the DJI Fly app as opposed to the DJI Go 4 app. Right now my Mini 2 is on the ground and you can see the live view of my DJI Fly app. On the bottom left of the screen is where your GPS, your map functionality is. So on the bottom left, you tap that little GPS icon, it expands partially, and that's your map that shows your surroundings. You tap on it once more, and it expands that view. Now this is something that I covered briefly in my setup tutorial about the Mini 2, but today we're gonna dive a little bit more into this functionality. You see right away, everything popped up. You see the dog park at Dick's Park. You see Murray's Tire and Auto. It's all around here because we have cellular data turned on with our cellular device. If we had cellular data turned off or we didn't have that functionality at all, like maybe we were using this with an iPad mini that wasn't connected to a data plan, uh, we would have to load this up previously. I'm gonna talk about that in a few minutes, but right now, because we have our 4G, or in my case, 5G uh, cellular data turned on, we have our maps pulled up automatically with all the street names. As we pinch in, we can see exactly where we're at. On the right side of this GPS uh, image, we see a little uh, five little icons. The top one, the I, stands for information, so we can find information about some of these various zones that you might encounter. Everything from a restricted zone to an altitude zone, authorization zone, you know, warnings, whatever. As we pinch out, so squeeze out from the app pretty far, you can see uh, RDU, Raleigh Durham International Airport, right over there and its corresponding airspace with its authorization that you would need to unlock in order to fly at all if you had FAA clearance to do so. You also see these uh, kind of like a, a cross shape. Those are the approach and takeoff patterns of some of those runways. And so we're on the very edge on the outside of what they would call an altitude zone, which means that I couldn't fly above a certain height there because of the airport nearby and the air traffic patterns. You can actually click on that space, you can tap on that space, I should say, with your finger, and it'll tell you what exactly it is. The target area is an altitude zone, flight restricted to 150 meters. Um, scrolling around, you also see this yellow one. We'll tap on that. It's a warning zone. It says, please fly with caution. Uh, it doesn't give any information, but it is around the airport. So I'm assuming that's also something having to do with the airport. We click right on the airport. We'll tap on it. It says an authorization zone. You can unlock, unlock flight restrictions. You can unlock a flight restriction within the app, but that doesn't mean you're actually unlocked legally. You would have to uh, contact the FAA and get clearance to fly in these spaces. So even though DJI Fly app will allow you to take off if you unlock it, you're still gonna have to get that proper authorization to fly legally. There are four other icons on the right side of this, but what we're gonna go to is, is go to the bottom one. The bottom one is that stacked view, which shows not only your standard, but also your satellite and your mixed GPS map. Clicking on satellite view is gonna show you the actual imagery of what's around you from a satellite view. And you can pinch in and you can observe, you can maybe find a new fly spot if you've never seen it before because you see a big open clearing nearby that you didn't even know existed. So that's pretty cool. And then you go to mixed, which is basically both the standard map and the satellite map with the standard street names and uh, points of interest overlaid over the satellite map. So that's like a combination. I usually keep it on standard just because it's easier to, to see my flight path, my flight history, and my home point without all these other distractions. We're gonna close out of that stacked view icon and you can see there are three other icons I didn't talk about yet. We're gonna talk about those once we take off. So it says compass calibration is required. I'm gonna do that really quick. Um, I'm not gonna do that on camera, watch my tutorial. To go back to the live view, just tap on that live view and it'll bring back up the live view. Now, if you want to minimize your GPS uh, icon on the bottom left even more, just tap that little arrow pointing to the lower left and it'll minimize it even further. And then you can take off and have your completely unobstructed live view. All right, you heard right there that the GPS uh, home point has been recorded 
and it says check it on the map. What we're gonna do is go back to the map and check it. So, bottom left of the screen, we're gonna tap on that icon again, expands halfway, we're gonna tap it again, it expands all the way, and we're going to pinch in. As we pinch in, we see that home point is right underneath the drone. So, when we're looking at this app, and I've, I've, I've pinched it in all the way with standard view on the GPS mode, H stands for home, which is where the drone took off. The little uh, paper airplane looking arrow icon is the drone itself. The way it's pointing is the way the drone is pointing in space. The little circle with the arrow off to the right here is where I am. Moving the drone through space like this will create a flight path or a flight history of where you went. So as I'm flying around, you can see I'm basically drawing a rough circle in my flight history like that. And that's a recording of where I've flown. The red line indicates the shortest point back to the home point. So I'm not actually at the home point here. I'm sitting about 15 feet away. And that's why the remote control icon is over here. The home point is over there where I actually physically put down the drone to take off. And the drone itself is another few feet beyond that. If I want to fly back to that home point, I would just turn the drone. And you see how the drone indicator also turns on the screen. And I point right down that red line and then move all the way down it. And now I'm pretty much over that home point. Well, right there, <laughs> close enough. And I'm basically at the home point right there. Okay, so now I can land and I'm pretty much right next to my home point. You can also see that as I turn my body with the remote, that continues to turn the remote control icons. Okay. Also is able to know which way the remote control is pointing. That's pretty cool. Now that we're up in the sky and we already have a bit of a flight path here, on the right, right below the information icon, we see an eraser icon. If you tap that, it erases your flight path. So it erases your history. You can create a new history from here on, and uh, that kind of helps out maybe if you've been uh, flying for 20 minutes and you're just creating spaghetti on your screen, then just tap that and you can start fresh and then you know exactly where you're flying and uh, what your new flight path has been. Uh, underneath that is your home point. So you can select either centering the screen on the drone or the home point. Now, if I fly further from my home point, that becomes a little more apparent. So I'm gonna fly this direction. Now I'm gonna center the screen on the, the drone or on the home point. Very easy to go back and forth and to center your screen on what you wanna see. Supplemental voiceover because I left this out at the park. This button allows you to toggle between having a north, south, east, west view in the GPS map or allowing the remote and your mobile device to serve as its own compass where as you turn the remote control, the view also turns with it. Now, what if you want to change your home point? This is helpful if you've flown a couple hundred feet, you've walked to where the drone is, and you want to create a new home point in case maybe you want to return to home close to home or at least find your bearings on the GPS map. What you can do is tap on those three little dots on the upper right, which opens up the menu, and under the safety tab, you see update home point. Tap update home point, and now you can update that home point. So it's a little mini GPS map that's just come up, and you can drag anywhere around where you are and create a new home point. So let's tap a new home point, let's create it over here, and then we'll hit OK. Home point, home point has been updated. Please home, check it on the map. Home point has been updated. Now let's scroll out and see where I put my home point. Way over there. So that's really cool that we can update our home point relatively easily. Um, now if we want to move that back, we just go back into that menu and put it back a little bit closer. That's a really easy way to um, work with the map. Let's go back to the live view. And we'll, so we're gonna tap on our live video feed right there. And this little button in the corner allows you to toggle between making that view change from north, south, east, west, up, down, right, left, 
or allowing that viewpoint to turn as you turn your remote control and your display device. We can center that view on the drone's position versus the entire uh, flight plan essentially with the home point included in the view. On the lower left of that little menu is how you go and you minimize that even further to make it even just a small little GPS icon or on the lower right of that is your compass. Now I talked about the compass a little bit in my last video about firmware updates for this drone. Um, but basically this is the way that you can find out where the drone is pointed in terms of north, south, east, west. You can also see the remote control icon over there, which also has the remote icon uh, pointed differently depending on which way I turn my body. You'll also see the home point as a yellow circle right there. And so if I want to fly back to myself, I would turn this way and start flying forward because of that little green pie slice showing exactly where it is and, and what we're looking at, or keep turning and face that home point and fly that direction. The other cool thing about the compass icon, you'll see the attitude indicators move back and forth, left and right, depending on which way the drone is tilted. So as the drone moves back, obviously it's tilted back a little bit, and that's what the attitude indicators are showing. Now we press forward, and those attitude indicators go up, indicating that the drone is tilted forward. Similarly, if we move right or left, you can see those banking pretty hard, those two white lines on the attitude indicator. That's really handy to know not only how your drone's moving and, and what tilt it's at as it's moving, but also maybe even wind direction. As you're just hovering there, you would see the drone compensating for that wind by maybe tilting toward the direction of the wind to push against it. You could see that on the attitude indicator right here in the compass. As you continue to fly, so I'm gonna fly back to myself, you'll see that the blue circle, which indicates me, gets closer to the aircraft indicator in the center of the compass map. So I'm pretty much on top of myself now. So this is a really good way to orient yourself in space. And going back to the GPS menu, which we would uh, go back to the little GPS icon on the lower right of that compass, we expand that one more time, and we can see how we will either fly back to ourselves or fly back to the home point with the red line. Now that whole process was all well and good when you have cellular signal, cellular plan on your cell phone device or, or display device, I should say. So I was using a Google Pixel 5 with the remote, but I have a Google Pixel 4 that I do not have a data plan associated with. So right now, basically all I could do is connect this to Wi-Fi. How am I gonna get maps onto my device? Well, this also might help be helpful if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you don't have cell phone signal, even if you did have a cell phone with a data plan. In the DJI Fly app, what you can do if you're at home with your Wi-Fi or if you are at the Starbucks before you go out to fly or someplace, even a mobile hotspot from another device, you could connect to aircraft on the lower right. There's no aircraft connected at the moment and select which drone you want to fly. Um, let's select an entirely different one, Mavic Air 2. We're going to go to camera view on the upper right and we already can access our GPS map. Now you'll see when we expand that map view, the GPS menu is completely empty. Doesn't even know exactly where we are at all. I'm pinching out, pinching in. There's nothing to indicate where we are. No street names, no landmarks, no nothing. Well, what you can do is connect to a Wi-Fi signal and this will load up almost immediately. Um, what I'm gonna do is hotspot from my cellular Pixel 5 to my Wi-Fi Pixel 4, so simulating what you could do at home previously. And now that I've connected to the internet, there we are. Pinching in, we can see exactly where we are. The more you pinch in, the more data it loads up onto your device in the map cache, the GPS map cache. So this is saving. So now I can go out to here later on in the day without any cellular or Wi-Fi and my GPS map here will already be loaded up. It'll already know where I am. GPS map cache is saved. Now here's one very valuable reason why you might want to have these GPS maps loaded up. So, you know, you might say, oh, I'm just gonna take a couple short flights, but I know exactly where I'm at. You know, it's gonna be right over there. I don't need the GPS map 
uh, for that. Well, the only problem you might run into, maybe you crash your drone. You have a flyaway, you lose your drone somehow, and you want to use the Find My Drone option there on the lower right of the GPS map. Well, right now, because I have my maps loaded up, if I hit Find My Drone, in the Find My Drone menu, you see, oh, there's my drone, right there. If you didn't have your maps loaded up, there would be no street names or points of interest to go off of to kind of triangulate and find out where that drone might be. It's just gonna be like a blank GPS page with no dynamic or no detail. So if you've loaded up your maps previously, then the Find My Drone uh, function actually becomes useful. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Hope it was helpful. Um, check the links in the video description to the DJI Mini 2. Um, hope to make a few more videos in the near future about it before, you know, the next big thing comes out. But anyway, until the next time, happy flying everybody.